Weather is having a small effect on an historic event near the coast of San Diego. In less than 48 hours, the return of NASA's Artemis spaceship, the first step of NASA's mission to get Americans back on the moon. And that's why my co-anchor Kimberly Hunt is at the Air and Space Museum. Kimberly, exciting times right now for NASA San Diego and some lo local Navy sailors. It is, Wale. NASA's Artemis One mission is poised now to take a key step toward returning humans to the moon after a half century hiatus. And it's been 50 years since Apollo 17, the last lunar landing. In fact, this first of three Artemis missions is a maximum test flight with an uncrewed capsule. The spacecraft traveled to the moon, deployed some satellites, and settled into orbit. And this is giving NASA a chance to test the conditions that eventually the astronauts with Artemis 3 will experience on and around the moon. And I'm here at the Air and Space Museum in Balboa Park. San Diego was set to be the splashdown spot for the Artemis 1 Orion space capsule. But that changed due to the weather conditions Angelica was just talking about. Now the splashdown is expected to happen off the coast of Baja, California, just to our south. Everything is on target, though, to happen on Sunday, just as we plan. Let's look at how we got here. Artemis 1 launched November 16th at NASA's Kennedy Space Center in Florida. The mission is covering 1.4 million miles in 25 days, over 10 hours, 53 minutes. The splashdown this Sunday off Baja, California. And service members in San Diego will have a major role in the upcoming retrieval of the Artemis capsule called the Orion. We caught up with NASA Administrator Bill Nelson, and he told us about the coordination that NASA has with those on the ground. Let's hear it. The United States Navy is standing tall. They're going to be out there helping us. Uh, they've already done a practice run. Uh, they are back now waiting then to leave port to go out to the location. Lots of coordination with the people in San Diego for this. Lots of coordination, lots of practice. Now the Navy just waiting until Sunday. We have details of that retrieval all coming up at six o'clock. We also have much more from right here and the president of the Air and Space Museum joining us, Jim Kidrick, always a pleasure. Thank you. Well, thanks for joining us. And I wanna first let everyone know that NASA sent a team right here, dealt with Jim, and they were looking at the Apollo 9, which is on display all the time at the Air and Space Museum. And what were they looking at specifically as they look at this retrieval, Jim? Well, a number of things, because they, uh, they were concerned about the retrieval. They were looking at a number of the hard points for the lifting of the capsule, because as you know, it's quite heavy. And of course, when it gets into the water, it's even a little bit heavier, a little bit of suction from the water. So, so what uh, he's pointing at is the very top of the capsule that Jimmy is showing you right, right there. And so explain how they've decided they're going to float the capsule into the USS Portland just because they can't do that with a helicopter. Right, so what they've uh, chosen, because the capsule's about a third larger, uh, is they're gonna actually tow it into the well deck of the USS Portland. The Portland is a ship that is capable of launching amphibious uh, craft, and uh, they will actually flood the, the, the well deck, they will float it in, tow it in, ah. and then they will drain the water out of there and it will sit comfortably uh, on the Portland. You know there's always so much attention on the heat shields. This rocket, the Orion, will come in at 25,000 miles an hour, it will be the fastest rocket to ever make its way back to Earth. These heat shields show us right here on the Apollo. Well, they are. And of course, this is one that has gone through that complete re-entry wow, process. Wow, right under here. So you can see what it does. And this is one of the key points that they're testing with the new Orion capsule, is to make sure before they put people on board, which will be Artemis II, that this works. Wow. If this doesn't work, it kind of spoils your day. Absolutely. This is smaller, as you said. Let's come around, Jimmy, and look, because three astronauts were aboard this Apollo 9. I'll let you go right up in here and show how tight that is, because Jim is telling us there will be the four astronauts on Orion when Artemis 3 eventually does that. Well, Artemis 2 and Artemis 3. Yeah. Okay, Artemis 3, of course, will actually land on the moon. So right. this is three 
uh, what we might define as quick missions, okay, but they're, they're not that close together. But these are the kinds of tests that we have to do before we walk on the moon again. So there really, really isn't anything on Artemis One that we haven't done in Apollo, except we have a brand new capsule, mm -hmm. we have a brand new uh, space launch system, the SLS, so everything has to work perfectly before you put people on it. It's amazing to see how small this is. We have much more from the Air and Space Museum. We're going to be live, not only coming up at 5.30, back here at 6, and we'll be looking at all the other artifacts in our space history. Back to you, Wale. Look at Apollo 9 there, Cam, and we will all be watching this weekend. Thank you so much.